the first ELN morning of the year. We sat down with President Lambert as he told us what he hopes to see in Elon's future. I left it all out on the field this weekend as our Elon local news team took on Sports Fest. And break a leg. I listened in as some rising stars stepped up to the big stage. All this and more coming up on ELN Morning. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to the first ELN morning of the semester. I'm Jasmine Turner. And I'm Ashley McGetrick. Last spring we brought you the best in both national and local news, entertainment and much more. This fall we'll be live during College Coffee every other Tuesday so continue to tune in to our show. We begin this morning with news from Syria. NBC News confirmed this morning that Israel conducted an anti-missile test in the Mediterranean Sea. According to NBC News, the United States did have advanced warning, but was not directly involved in the test. President Obama will meet with lawmakers today to discuss a potential course of action in Syria in wake of the alleged use of sarin gas last week outside Damascus. According to United Nations Refugee Agency, every 15 seconds a Syrian becomes a refugee. We'll keep you updated as we hear more. It was a time when the Alamance Fountain was a parking lot, students arrived on campus by bus, and the mascot was the Fighting Christian. This semester, we will travel back in time and take a look at some of Elon's greatest traditions and characters. On September 2nd, Elon Local News will air a special to honor the last 125 years of Elon's history. College coffee has become a staple at Elon. It's a time when hundreds of faculty, students, and staff can join in conversation over pastries, refreshments, and music. In the early 1980s, SGA first organized weekly coffees. The goal was to create a forum where students could talk about issues and present new ideas to the administration. In 1984, President Amaritis Fred Young officially established College Coffee. He's a regular at College Coffee and one of the most well-known people on campus, President Emeritus Dr. Earl Danley. Check out what Dr. Danley told University Communications at the first College Coffee of the year. Man, I love College Coffee. I love to come every week. I get to see so many wonderful people. And truth is, I don't mind having a donut. And live from this morning's College Coffee is our own College Coffee correspondent, Matt Lee. Yeah. Matt? Hey guys, it's Elon's 125th anniversary. That's a long time. And to celebrate at College Coffee, they're giving these commemorative cards which celebrate a little part of Elon's history throughout the years. So this one's about the great fire that burned everything down, but we rebuilt and we're better than ever today. So they've also got a bunch of tables here, some about the study abroad deadlines. So if you haven't gotten study abroad deadlines, you need to get that going because it's coming up, coming up. And uh, uh, we got a lot of people here. There's a lot of excitement. This guy's walking around. He's screaming something. Uh, so that's about all that's going on here today. But pick up a commemorative card and celebrate Elon's 125th anniversary. Back to you guys. With us live in the studio, Gary Grumbach bringing you the top news you should know today. Thanks, uh, Jasmine and Ashley. Good morning. In the news this morning, an update from the tech world. Software giant Microsoft is picking up phone company Nokia's handset division for $7.2 billion. Nokia has been using Microsoft's Windows platform for two years. This deal means Microsoft is trying to become a key player in the ever-popular smartphone race. Nearly 32,000 employees will be transferred from Nokia to Microsoft. It's a, daring, it's a drug becoming more popular in song lyrics. Two people are dead in New York City this morning, and police say the drug MDMA, also known as Molly, is to blame. Police say the two people were at the annual New York Electric Zoo Festival this weekend and overdosed on the drug. City officials say the concert was canceled on Sunday after police suspected drug use. And in lighter news, long-distance swimmer Diana Nyad is waking up this morning as the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida without a star cage. Nyad is 64. She was escorted to the Key West shoreline by the U.S. Coast Guard. After arriving on shore, she tweeted these three messages. One, to never give up. Two, you're never too old to chase dreams. And three, it's never a solitary sport. It's a team. That's the news that matters this morning, September 3rd, 2013. For ELN Morning, I'm Gary Grumbach. Ashley, Jasmine, back to you.
Thanks, Gary. And coming up after the break, we spoke to President Lambert about Elon's last 125 years and what he expects from the next few years. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a. I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. up on sex? Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Now, yesterday things surprised us and it actually turned out to be a beautiful day. What are things looking like today? Jasmine and Ashley, good morning. Outside at College Coffee with Matt Lee this morning, it's nice and comfortable. Temperatures are hovering, are hovering around 75 degrees. We may get some showers later this afternoon. Hopefully they don't come through. Besides this afternoon, your week is looking amazing. Here's your Phoenix five-day forecast. Mostly sunny in the, and in the 80s all week long. Friday's Org Fair is looking great. Maybe a few clouds around, but that could be nice to cool things down a bit. Ashley? As the school honors its 125th year, Joe Bruno looks ahead to what Eli could look like in 10 years from now. He sat down with President Lambert to talk about the future of the college. Iconic fountains and new buildings. Campus is changing. This institution could have been counted out many times along the way, but has always persevered and, um, and particularly in the modern age has really, really thrived. With the new buildings and picturesque scenery has come not only national recognition, but also an increase in tuition cost. Since 2009, tuition has increased 18.2%, and for the first time, the total cost of attending Elon has broken the $40,000 barrier. We're still a value compared to many of our peer and private, our private competitors, peer institutions. 10 to 15 to 20 thousand dollars less expensive, but still 40 thousand dollars a year is a lot of money. Ten years down the road with all these changes, is it is Elon still going to be an affordable school? Will an average middle class student be able to attend Elon University? I hope so. But the increased cost is not for nothing. President Lambert has overseen the addition of more than 100 buildings since he took over in 1999. When everything's said and done, how do you want to be remembered at Elon? What do you want your legacy to be? Wow. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not planning on dying. <laughs> but I would, I guess I would say two things. Um, one of which is focusing on academic excellence at Elon has always been a priority of mine. And, you know, we've, we've built, in my almost 15 years here, we've, I think we've continued to build a marvelous faculty and staff, which are the most important resource for students. And the, and the other is a, a commitment that I feel very deeply about Elon being a place that 
uh, is accessible to students whose parents can't pay the full cost of tuition and attendance. For more of Joe Bruno's interview with President Lambert, tune in to ELN Radio tomorrow night at 6 on WSOE 89.3 FM. While President Lambert is investing in Elon's future, some students are investing in their own. It's kind of like a game. Like, you can always tell if you're winning. Like, am I beating the market? College students aren't known for having a wealth of disposable income. But for those that do, simply putting it aside isn't your only option. Some invest their money. No matter how small the amount, it's the habit that you want to develop. Most people, uh, when they start investing, use mutual funds. What is a mutual fund? They aggregate dollars from various investors and then with a larger pool of money they invest it in a diversified portfolio of whatever. In buying a mutual fund you're actually hiring a manager to invest as he sees fit. Both advisors put emphasis on diversification. Diversification is important as it spreads your funds around by investing in a variety of assets. This reduces your risk in the event a stock doesn't do well. Sophomore Michael Keenan invests money he made at summer jobs and stresses the importance of knowing your stuff. Either talk to people, familiarize yourself with all the terms in the stock market. I read books. I read like 10 books. While some are interested in investing, others are overwhelmed by the charts and all the data. You have to educate yourself. You have to find someone you can trust if you want an advisor. You have to... Um, look at the products and you have to monitor your success. Everyone I spoke with mentioned starting early. When you're in college, retirement seems like it's an eon away. Like too many people today get too close to retirement before they realize that they haven't done what they needed to do in setting money aside. Plus you get experience, so when you do have a lot of money to invest, you're like, I've already done this before, Like I know what I'm doing. Katie Mergy, Elon Local News. Coming up after the break, I scroll through the app store so you don't have to. The best of smartphone apps, next. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Students have been in class about a week, but it sometimes takes longer than that to adjust to being back. Our Aurora Albi Mercier has some advice. The school year has just begun and everything is still fresh and new, but sometimes living on your own can be a challenge. Here's my survival guide to help you survive your first year here at Elon. Pro tip number one, be on time to class. Depending on your professor's syllabus, being even five minutes late could mean an absence. So follow this rule. Early is on time. On time is late, and late is unacceptable. Pro tip number two, know where the health center is. Odds are, you're gonna need it. The Ellington Health Center moved to South Campus, which can be confusing to find. Walk under the railroad tracks and down O'Kelly Street. The health center is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pro tip number three, go to College Coffee. College Coffee is every Tuesday from 9.40 to 10.20 here at the Phi Beta Kappa Plaza. It's a great time not only to get free food and free coffee, but also to talk to professors outside of class. If you're lucky, you can even spot President Lambert. Pro tip number four, laundry time. Try to do your laundry on off time. Sundays are peak laundry time, and there's going to be competition for washers and dryers. And if you don't want your laundry to turn out pink, make sure to separate your colors. Those are my top tips for surviving your first year at Elon. I'm Aurora Albi-Mercier for Elon Local News. 
Freshmen, swapping your notebook for your tablet won't just save you paper, it may save you a headache too. I found the best apps to help you make the most of your semester. If the free planner you got at orientation isn't cutting it for you, you're going to want to download iStudies Pro. For $2.99, this digital agenda will keep track of your assignments, tests, meetings, and more. It will even give you notifications when you should start working on assignments if you want to finish them on time. But if a notification isn't enough to keep you from procrastinating, you should definitely download Study Buddy. This app monitors your every move while studying and gives you a full report on your study habits so you can see where and when you work best and what distracts you the most. Now, studying can be difficult, but it can also be expensive. Amazon Student looks out for your wallet by finding the cheapest textbooks. Just scan any barcode of any book to find the best deals of the semester. And finally, my favorite app of all, Campus Dish. No more guessing what's cooking in the dining halls. This free app tells you what's being served all over campus. For more must-have apps of this semester, be sure to check out elon.com. Up next, my co-hosts left it all on the field and showed their impressive athletic skills in an annual Elon tradition. Stay with us. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it deep back into the stand. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Over 13 million people are affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Make a simple text donation of $10. But do more than donate. Forward the facts. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where the ember will land. Only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. It's Elon's 125th birthday, and to celebrate, my co-host, Matt Lee and Jasmine Turner, participated in this week's Elon tradition that's made more than a decade old, Sports Fest. 73 teams, including our own Elon local news team, made their way to the South Campus Fields Friday afternoon with one thing in mind, winning. In this Elon tradition, teams of 8 to 10 members played their division in a fight to the finish in six sporting events from relay race to tug of war. One, two, With about 10% of campus registered for Sports Fest, we had some tough competition. After a quick team huddle, we got down to business with a Sports Fest favorite, dodgeball. But being a news team and not athletes, we didn't make it past round two. Did you break the sweat out there? I did not. They didn't really want me to do anything. But we pushed through, anchoring the ELN team in the three-legged sack race and a sprint to the finish in the CrossFit Challenge. Oh my God. I really can't do anything else except run in a straight line, so well, you I'm glad I could fast. do Are you tired the now? team service. Um, yes, very much so. <laughs> so I'm going to sit out the next one, but I'm going to be the best cheerleader the team's ever had. We even made a name for ourselves what? on the field. Are you uh, worried about this Elon local news team that you would face? Yes, very, very I heard very good things. But our real athleticism showed in an event that wasn't a sport at all, the sponge race. Sprinting from the pool to the bucket, our team wrung out sponges to fill the water to the top, landing us a first place win in our division. After nearly three hours of battling it out on the field, it was time to find out who was going home victorious. Our team waited out the anticipation by chowing down on some Smitty's ice cream. Elon Local CBLN. News placed 21st Reading overall, lead. landing us in the top third of the competition. Oh oh Ashley, so you brought something special in the studio. Yes, I, I did. Now, I have never been a natural-born athlete, but I do have something to show for my efforts, and it's this lovely tank Can top look at that, that nice we did get top. for placing in the top. I believe it was 25 teams got the jersey, Excellent. which doesn't sound too great, but there was a lot of teams there, so I'm pretty proud of us. Yeah. You know? ELN has a 16-year tradition of being a part of Sports Fest. I, so you know more than I do. History. Look at that. Just yeah, making bit. history, right? I am 
still sore from it. So we're going to have mandatory ELN gym hours starting now. Sounds good to me. I guess maybe next year I'll participate. So. <laughs> All right, well now, watching all of that made me a little bit hungry. And if you're looking for a healthy meal after your own games, we're cooking with Lauren Cook. Welcome to Cooking with Cook. I'm Lauren Cook, and I'll be your host this morning. Although it's September, it's still sunny and beautiful here in North Carolina. So today, we'll be making a summer salad. Let's go over the ingredients we'll be using. So for this recipe, we'll be using cherry tomatoes, feta cheese, two avocados, three husks of corn, a cucumber, and a red onion. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees because you're going to bake the corn. What you want to do is you want to place all three corn husks in the oven and bake them for 25 minutes. All right, so now that that's all set, we're going to go over and chop up the rest of our vegetables. So you're going to want to use about half the box of tomatoes that you get, and you're just going to slice them nice and easy. You're just going to go ahead and add these right to a big bowl. Now you want to go ahead and chop up the cucumber. Depending on how much cucumber you like, you can either add half or the whole cucumber. We are going to use about three quarters of it right now. So you want to go ahead and just finely dice this. All this to the mixture as well. You want to go ahead and take your red onion. We're going to use a quarter to a half of it. You want to go ahead and just peel off the excess skin, a little less than half. And you're just going to go ahead and finally dice this as well. Okay, and you're going to go ahead and add the onion to the mix. Add some purple in there. So next, you're going to go ahead and take both the avocados. And you're going to cut them up and finely dice them as well. Go ahead and add all that green in there. Okay, so after 25 minutes, we're going to go back into the oven and take the corn right out and set them aside to cool. So now that the corn is pretty cooled off, still a little warm, we're going to go ahead and just take off all the husk and it should come off pretty easily along with all the string inside because you baked it. And shave down the sides. The corn's going to go everywhere so be careful. Go ahead and add all of this corn right into the mixture as well. Ooh, careful, we've got some strays going off the edge. Looks like a lot of corn, but it is the base of this recipe. So the last thing you're going to go ahead and add is the feta cheese. I get a Thinos, which you can just get at any regular grocery store, and just get the little block of it. I'm just going to pour it right over. Mix that all together and look at all those colors come together with the corn, the feta, cherry tomatoes, red onion, avocado, everything right in there. So again for this recipe, we use feta cheese, three corn husks, cherry tomatoes, one cucumber, one red onion, and two avocados. So all these ingredients I got at Target and they were each less than $3. So all together I spent roughly $15. Depending on where you go, it could be more expensive, but I recommend looking at brands such as Target or Walmart to get your ingredients for this recipe. And there you go, your summer salad. For Elon in the morning, I'm Lauren Cook. Back to you guys. Lauren, and it's not too long until lunchtime, hopefully, because I'm really hungry. Me too. <laughs> and after we come back, I spoke to some rising stars whose talent might surprise you, so don't go anywhere. Now it's time for This Week in Bad Stats. Bad stats? Horrible stats. Here goes. 132. That's how many batters struck out four times in one game last season. Wow, very good. Here's a tough one, though. Three and four. No idea. That's how many kids witness bullying. Three out of four. That's not a good stat. No, it's not, but it can change. Kids want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov and give them the tools they need to help prevent bullying. There are plenty of safe ways kids can help at StopBullying.gov. Mom, can I have a dollar? Yeah, that's right. 
I think my purse is upstairs on the bed. It's not here. Check the dining room. No. What about your sister's room? It's not there either. The upstairs closet? The downstairs closet. There are no more closets. <laughs> Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. We are having a little bit of technical difficulty, so we don't have Matt Lee with us right now. But I headed to McCrary Theater this weekend where actors were auditioning for Ragtime, Elon Small Musical. These actors didn't come up short. Set in the 1920s, Elon Small Musical follows characters of three different ethnic groups as they try to make it in America. Also trying to make it? It was a little... Um, scary because they were really good and like me and them, like, they're really, really, really good. Though a college production, local children were invited to audition for younger roles in the show and nine-year-old McLaurin Hull came prepared. I went to my voice teacher and um, we worked on my audition song together. Awesome. And what was your audition song? I See the Light from Tangled. Her biggest fan was in the audience and says she loves being a theater mom. It is so much fun because I'm not a theater person, but it's really fun to experience, you know, it through her and um, she's really enjoying it and has a lot of fun with it. Auditioning for the same role as Hull, Elon sophomore Jessica Ryloff. Ryloff says she learned a lot while working with the children. They have this innocence that I think someone like me, it's, it's hard for me to portray that on the stage and it just comes very naturally to them. So it was very impressive seeing them up on the stage. Now, I know that you have actually something exciting for us that goes along with what we just heard. You want to show us? I do. I actually have the cast list of Ragtime mm -hmm. with me right now. And the very interesting and also really cool part is that among the cast list are McLaurin and Jessica, who were both cast in the musical. McLaurin is actually the role of the little girl, which is really awesome because she's a nine-year-old. And Jessica is in the ensemble, but she's going to also be McLaurin's understudy. So if Look something will happen, she'll step in for her, which is really awesome. Yeah, I think you're the good luck charm. It was the interview that did it. I hope so. I think so too. Now, I personally thought that Jasmine should have auditioned herself, <laughs> but... There's always next time, right? Exactly. At four foot eleven, I probably could have maybe been McLaurin's understudy or Jessica's maybe. understudy. Maybe she's very talented, though. So big <laughs> shoes to fill, even though they're actually small. Shoes. They're yeah. actually small shoes, but it was really fun <laughs> being out there um, in McCreary. You got to see a lot of the kids, and we got to interact with them, interview some of them. We got to watch the auditions, and Ashley was actually there helping me out. I was, but um, you know what? I think that's all the time that we have for today, because oh. This we, just in. Yeah, we mm -hmm. do have some breaking news with us right now. President Obama says that chemical weapons use in Syria poses a serious threat to national security. He says, quote, this is not Iraq and this is not Afghanistan. That's all we have for you this morning. But we'll be back right here in two weeks. In the meantime, be sure to check us out on social media, facebook.com slash ELN Morning and on Twitter, ELN Morning. And for all the latest news, be sure to visit our website, elonlocalnews.com. Thanks for tuning in. See you next in the next two weeks.